Okay, Deidre, go ahead. Hi, and my name is Deidre. I'd like to welcome you today to today's information session webinar on the Young Persons Lecture Competition. Uh, I am joined today by Max Edgington, who is the highly qualified personal coordinator at the Arthur B. Macdonald Canadian Physics Research Institute, along with last year's winner, Hannah Ramsey, uh, who will be presenting um, as well today. Uh, so first of all, I just want to uh, get into the connection between uh, us and uh, this particular competition. So the Centre for Excellence in Mining Innovation was established uh, as a not-for-profit in 2007. And our vision here is to help mine solve the challenges by making the future happen tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow is the students. And that's who we're essentially reaching out to uh, by means of this competition and cross-sector engagement. And from SEMI, uh, MICA was born as uh, the program that we've just recently launched. Uh, it is a national network innovation for mining. MICA is designed to bridge the innovation commercialization gaps that delay commercial success domestically and globally through MICA. We will leverage public and private sector investments to benefit the mining sector, both domestic and global in the Canadian economy by investing in and advancing made in Canada solutions and integrating mining and cross-sector SME innovators nationally and fostering networking opportunities and inter-sector collaboration to generate synergies to help increase the number scale and market reach of Canadian SMEs. And again, this also goes back to our reasoning for wanting to get involved uh, with this competition. We have six main partners across the country who are uh, primarily involved in, in post-sector area. Uh, so BRIM out of uh, BC, they're connected with the University of British Columbia in the Tech Alberta, uh, Saskatchewan a Polytech. We actually see Paul LeBay uh, from, from Sask Poly. Uh, Mars in Ontario, Paul. Uh, Nisa out of Quebec and the College of the Northern Atlantic. They are helping us uh, in growing the network on a uh, national scale. So I'm going to hand it over to Max uh, to talk a little bit about the, the history behind the competition and as well as introducing uh, last year's winner. Take it away, Max. Max, you're muted. Thanks. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. Seems like I had a bit of a connection issue, but I think it's fine now. Um, so my name is Max Edgington. I'm the, again, highly qualified personnel coordinator for the Arthur B. McDonald uh, Institute. And uh, Semi invited me today to provide a brief history of the Canadian Young Persons Lecture Competition. Um, so our interaction with the competition started in 2019 when Jody Lees was working at the McDonald Institute. Institute as the program coordinator uh, after having been with us in several other roles since 2017. Um, her partner at the time, uh, Matthew Topping, was at the time a postdoctoral fellow at the Reactor Materials Testing Lab and uh, had a prior relationship from his graduate work with the IOM3 in, U in the UK. Uh, and he had been con in contact with the events coordinator, Effie Fragku, uh, and had approached us through Jody. Um, so the managing director at the time, Fouad El Gindi, took a look at it. Uh, Edward Thomas, our interim managing director, took a look at it, and Jennifer Lowe, our project uh, officer, also had a look, and they hashed it out and determined it was a very valuable um, prospect. Uh, it is both an international opportunity and an opportunity for some of our students to learn how to present their research in a compelling 15-minute format. Um, those opportunities outside of conferences, especially for a broad audience are typically far and few between for students, unfortunately. Um, Morgan Lattinen, who you see in the slide. Um, oh, hello, Max, Max, can you just uh, rewind maybe 30 seconds because we, we lost you for a moment. Sure, 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 sure. Um, so I'll take it back to, uh, just generally speaking, how great the competition is, because I think that's a great place to, to come back to. 
Um, so again, it's international and also it's uh, an amazing opportunity for students to participate in a 15 minute format uh, research presentation, uh, which again is just unfortunately not typically found outside of conferences for a lot of students. Uh, so we quickly put this together and we had a nice on-campus event uh, before for COVID times uh, with Effie and another IOM3 representative who both came from the UK to, uh, to judge the event. And through this, we generated our Canadian champion, Morgan Lettinen, uh, who you see in the photo, um, who went on to win third place globally. Uh, and we've been at it since then. And of course, last year, Hannah Ramsey, uh, last year's Canadian champion, who you'll meet in a moment, um, won the competition outright. So it's been very rewarding for us. Um, however, our institute operates at the frontier of science, so we do have some common interests in materials innovation. Uh, mining insofar as the Cretan mine graciously is our host for our primary research facility, Snow Lab. Um, however, we wouldn't necessarily say we're miners, except that we've learned the appropriate safety procedures for operating in a mine and getting to and from. Uh, so that being said, you know, we've had this ongoing relationship with the Center for uh, Excellence in Mining Innovation. Uh, the Canadian Centre for Excellence in Mining Innovation, and uh, they've received a, uh, a sizable funding award uh, for a mining tech accelerator, and it just seemed obvious that they could run with this and, and take it in stride. Um, so we're off to a good start with the competition, but we're very keen to make sure that this event would always have a high profile in Canada, and our partnership with SEMI showed us that there's an opportunity for our partner to go even further with this competition. Uh, you know, SEMI has a sizable audience globally, uh, Canada is obviously a major mining nation, and Toronto is a major mining headquarters in the world, uh, and SEMI is intimately engaged with that. And we still engage with the big mining association meeting that happens every year. Uh, we go as well as Snow Lab, um, but we saw a partner who could really make this thing, so we had a conversation, they were keen on it, and so we made the arrangements. Um, we imagine we're still going to stay engaged with this over the long term, uh, but we're delighted that our new partner has really has the attention of many thousands of the highest placed mining executives in the world, uh, in addition to a whole army of students, undergraduate to graduate and early professionals um, within their sphere of influence. So we're thrilled for SEMI to take the lead and we're excited for to see how they'll evolve this competition in the future. And back to you for now, Deidre, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> it's my honor to um, introduce uh, Hannah Ramsey. Uh, she was the winner of last year's competition. She's just going to give us a uh, rundown on her experience and how her life uh, has kind of evolved uh, after uh, her experience with the competition. Take it away, Hannah. So thank you both for that um, kind introduction. And it's great to be here for um, a couple minutes today just to share with you why I think the um, Young Persons Lecture Competition is an excellent um, competition to participate in and the opportunities it's kind of um, brought to me and helped me grow as a scientist. So um, I first heard about this competition through um, our chemistry department last year and my professor and colleagues encouraged me to participate. Um, and it was so much more than I thought it would be at the time um, because it wasn't only just a competition, but they also provided us different opportunities to improve our scientific communication skills, um, as well as to learn about the research from other young researchers around the university and at other universities. Um, I'm from Queens. So it was a really excellent networking experience um, and a way to improve my communication skills. And I wound up being successful in the Queens competition and then had the privilege of going on to represent Canada um, at the global competition, which is typically hosted um, in London, England, but last year took place online. Um, and at that competition, um, it was also a really excellent way to meet with enthusiastic young researchers all over the world and receive um, not only their, like they weren't there just to kind of listen to our presentations, but people also provided really excellent feedback that has actually helped push my research forward since that point in time. Um, so I actually defended my PhD in this materials research last fall, but since then my project has branched off into a number of different things, some of which have been inspired and um, kind of helped um, been focused on as a result of participating in the conference. And it's been really cool to see where my, where my research has evolved from here. Um, so I would strongly encourage you to participate. If that wasn't enough, there's also some really excellent in incentives. Um, so through winning the global competition, I was actually awarded this MacBook that I'm presenting on here to you today. That was really cool. There's a bit of financial incentive as well, but I mean, despite all of that, just the opportunity to meet some really excellent people and improve your communication skills and present your research to a general audience on a big stage, um, all of those were really invaluable experiences. So 
yeah, thank you so much for hosting this event and I would encourage you all to participate. Thanks so much, Hannah. Appreciate you taking your, your time out to uh, speak today. Uh, so she, uh, Hannah spoke uh, briefly just about the prizes for the uh, Canadian uh, winner. Uh, so uh, I am three uh, does have a cash prize, uh, normally it's a thousand pounds, as well as an ex uh, ex fully uh, expense paid trip to the finals, which uh, again Hannah mentioned was in England, uh, which is where I am three is based out of. Uh, this year, I believe they are going to uh, back go to the virtual. They haven't decided yet, but it's likely they're going to go back to the virtual format as they did last year, in which case uh, the winner would still um, uh, win a, a cash prize equivalent to the cost of the trip. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, one of our, uh, our main partners, Brim, uh, graciously donated uh, a three-week course that will take place in September. It's on the Introduction to Mineral and Exploration Economics, uh, a prize worth approximately $800. So we appreciate our, our, our main partners helping me, us out with, uh, with this event. And so just to give a little background on what the submission process uh, looks like, uh, we're looking, uh, we will be providing uh, a link to a Google form uh, in this presentation will be sent out at the conclusion uh, that will, it's a, a fairly simple, straightforward form, but it asks for some basic information uh, about, you know, if you meet the criteria, name of the institution, you're affiliated with and then what theme is your presentation based on so it would in order to uh, qualify as a submission it would need to relate to one of those uh, themes and then from there applications uh, will be the abstract will be accepted up until Monday May the 16th in the event that we're oversubscribed so anywhere more than 10 submissions. Judges uh, and our very own Charles Nybaz will be one of those esteemed judges. Uh, will review the submissions and select the top approximately eight to 10. From there, the select, uh, successful applicants will be contacted with further instructions and a link to the virtual event again through Zoom. Uh, the competition will take place on Tuesday, June 7th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And a Canadian winner will move on to the international competition at this time. A date has not been determined uh, by IM3. Uh, so that will be announced uh, later on uh, when they've determined what format they're going to conduct the competition in. And then we've included the form. Again, it's a very basic form. Uh, probably take about 15 or 20 minutes to complete, uh, asking about your theme and uh, a maximum of 150 uh, words abstract on, on what presentation uh, you would be uh, submitting. And for any more information or for questions, uh, you can, you know, feel free to reach out to myself. There's my email address, dgoral at semi.ca and Max Edginton as well uh, at over at Queen's. And uh, we thank you, you know, for taking the time out of your day to come listen uh, and hear about this amazing opportunity. And uh, we're happy to take any, any questions that you might have at this time.